When oxygen molecules travel from our lungs to our cells to oxygenate hemoglobin proteins in red blood cells, it influences our body's oxygen saturation, often called the fifth vital sign. Like every vital sign, we can monitor oxygen saturation either by diagnostic invasive arterial blood gas test or the pulse oximeter, a nifty medical device that doesn't draw a drop of blood. Pulse oximetry branches on spectrophotometry, a concept implying that different substances have unique absorption properties for different frequencies of electromagnetic waves. In this case, oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs more infrared light at 950 nanometers than red light at 650 nanometers. The red light passes straight through the oxygenated hemoglobin. On the other hand, deoxygenated hemoglobin takes in more red light than infrared light. The infrared light passes through the deoxygenated hemoglobin, unlike the red light, which is absorbed. In the pulse oximeter, two light emitting diodes each send red and infrared light to a photodetector. When your finger is placed in the probe, tissue, bone, blood and its components absorb light waves called incident light. The remaining light, called the transmitted light, makes contact with the photodetector. All data is sent to our main hub, the microprocessor. It uses formulas plus a concept of volume called plethysmography to get the oxygen saturation of arterial blood, with the amounts of oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin being a factor. More oxygenated hemoglobin leads to more oxygen saturation. The first formula is a ratio taking into account transmitted light. AC or alternating currents are rhythmic and pulsatile like hemoglobin in arterial blood. R stands for red light and IR is infrared light. In this transmitted light ratio, it's better to have more red alternating currents than infrared alternating currents because evidently the IR light was absorbed by a majority of oxygenated hemoglobin. Direct currents are non-pulsatile and steady like bone and tissue. Plethysmography lets us minus non-pulsatile volume from the total volume for the pulsating volume. Elementary, but we still have to consider two concepts. Bayer Lambert's law. In Bayer's law, high hemoglobin concentrations allow more absorbance. Lambert's law says longer paths create more contact with hemoglobin. Formula alert. This all relates transmitted light with incident light, molar extinction, or the absorbance strength of a substance, wavelength frequency, substance concentration, and distance. Oh, we're not quite finished. Please note, the SPO2 reading is the microprocessor's calibrated measurements from healthy volunteers who took arterial blood gas tests. Their oxygen levels were altered from 100 to 70 percent and no less. Anything below 90 is dangerous for your circulatory system, just like a calculation not even counted for. To combat shortcomings, pulse oximetry's principles fulfill their roles by arithmetically eliminating room light and using calibration formulas. Utilizing spectrophotometry for our fifth vital sign surpasses any flaws. 